we had a ton of bad residents here. So bad that the local police literally parked SWAT vehicles on both ends of the apartment complex to make sure that they could catch a lot of the bad things that were going on here. So this story is about an apartment complex of about 10, 12 acres and 120 plus units that I bought for 6.8 million and I've tripled in value in the last three to four years. And this apartment complex started on closing day with a shooting. So there's still the bullet hole in the siding. Uh, we haven't replaced it. The bullet's obviously out, but we will be redoing the one of the last things we're doing is the siding here. And not only was there a shooting, but the owner actually stopped doing maintenance requests for the, the 60 days left after the contingencies were waived. So we ended up having 90 plus different service requests that we had to fix. We had a ton of bad residents here. So bad that the local police literally parked SWAT vehicles on both ends of the apartment complex to make sure that they could catch a lot of the bad things that were going on here. We had drug dealers, we had people throwing garbage everywhere. We had three flooded basements. None of the laundries worked. As you might expect, this was a really, really big repositioning. It's also why I was able to triple the value. And the first thing that you do in a building like this or a property like this, and by the way, it is in a great location. I mean, every this is the worst property. Everywhere around it was better. And that's what I look for, something in a solid location. But the problem with the location is the building that I'm buying, not the buildings around it. I can't control the buildings around it. So it had the greatest opportunity. Plus, all 120 plus units, like I said, are surrounded by 12 to 14 acres of green space. So I really had the opportunity. All problems were actually on my property. And I also had the opportunity to be able to control my property against anything that I can't control, which was what was around it. Immediately, what we did is we obviously went after safety. You know, with a lot of the people doing illegal work, a lot of the drug dealers, we wanted to make sure we got them out. So along with the local police that literally put SWAT vehicles everywhere, we also asked them to do walkthroughs and we would notify the residents of those walkthroughs, obviously legally, but we'd have constant supervision from the local police, which really helped. People didn't put in a 30 day notice, right? They just left. So we started to see people leave in waves when they knew that the management company cared that the police cared and that they couldn't do the illegal things that they were doing here at the property. Then obviously as people started leaving, we started investing money in this place. I've spent over three and a half million dollars alone on this apartment complex and just some of the rehabbing. So we'd rehab the units all the way down, do full rehabs with the LVP, full appliance job, cabinets, et cetera, and really stick some money back into it. Because if we we're gonna put nicer residents and upgrade the units, we wanted to make sure we did it the right way. After that, we did the common areas. Then we did the roofs. Then we did the landscaping. You know, we just went after every area of this apartment complex. Went after the parking lot, went after the lighting. But honestly, the hardest thing with reposition in this property was dealing with the violence, dealing with the criminals, dealing with the people that were just left unchecked for so many years. And we worked on that, honestly, for probably nine to 12 months before it really started turning around. Luckily within the first three months with police presence, a lot of the really bad ones, like we haven't had a shooting since day one. <laughs> so um, it's only progressively gotten better. And it's just a, you know, something I wanna talk about. It's just this gray line when you start repositioning a property that's this bad, you can't just do a full rehab right away. We now have full rehabs everywhere, but we actually did a two-step process with our rehabs. And I wanna recommend this to anybody that's taking over a really tough repositioning. And here's why. Even if I went to a full rehab, right? I redid everything, it looks amazing. You gotta be able to get your ROI. And at this time, with the current level of residents that were living here, the kind of resident that would pay that amount of money for that beautiful rehab would not live next to the people that were currently living here. So a two-step process is what kind of things can you do, flip one, to not charge so much rent to get a better resident, but maybe not your avatar resident. So what we did here is we focused on things like brand new LVP, brand new trim, brand new doors, right, for security, um, maybe some updates in the bathroom, but we didn't replace the cabinets. Maybe we didn't replace the appliances. You know, we didn't, some of those heavy capital expenditures, we didn't do until the second flip. 
And the second flip, two years later, right, when that resident moves out, now we upgrade the cabinet, we update the things that we needed to do to really enhance the overall property, was able to attract not only higher rent, but even a higher uh, level of resident that wanted to live here too. And now they're willing to live here because we were able to get out all the residents that didn't belong, all the residents that were not following the policies and procedures. Not, I'm not even talking about criminal. I'm just talking about people that don't care about where they live, that are okay with smoking in the common areas, that are okay with throwing trash everywhere, that are okay with not cleaning up after their kids, letting sh their dog shit wherever they want, right? You don't have to be a criminal to do some of those things. But if rent is low enough, and you're just okay wherever you live, you're not proud of wherever you live, it's gonna be really hard to put somebody that's willing to pay $1,000 for a one bedroom, even if it's fully re remodeled next to that kind of community environment. So that's two step rehab process with our units really, really helped us continue to step up the residents that we wanted or the residents that we wanted and who they would be surrounded with. And now it's a really, really nice community. In fact, this community walking through it, I mean, the grass has finally come up exactly where we want it. The landscaping is on point. There's no trash anywhere. People are cleaning up after their pets on, on a 12 to 14 acre community campus. You want to have pets. You want to have kids. You want to have a place that's desirable for people to be able to walk here and from. And that's what this is now. And that's why the value has tripled. So this has been a great investment for me. But that first six to 12 months, starting with the bullet hole, starting with the flooded basement, starting with the almost 100 service requests and, and the criminal behavior took a lot of work. But if you're willing to put in the work, be strategic. And, I, and, and again, I'm saying work not like not only the three and a half million dollars that you'd have to stick into here, but the work to make sure that you are able to help the residents that don't want to follow the law or your policies exit, right, strategically. If you're willing to put in that work, and you're in a good location, there's so much money to be made. And beyond the money, the residents actually care about where they live. You also are creating just an awesome environment for them to be able to work and your employees to be able to service them.